You know, you talk, uh, I, well, I, was, I want to talk about those teams, but just to touch on something that I think as people on the other side of it don't, don't realize and don't process is the burden of promise. And I get a sense that that was something, even though you had great mentors and your dad and, and Cito and learning from the great Yankee teams, it was something you had to figure out yourself. Would you agree with that? For sure. You know, I, I tell people now, I'm a lot better pitcher and baseball guy now, huh. watching it on TV. <laughs> like I'm, you know, it's, the game looks so simple. And yet, when you're out there, it's, and, and you can, and I think it's with anything in life, right? We can all go read a book, a how-to book, but until you do it and apply it and learn and go through the ups and downs of it, it's like, and I had to do that. And, and, and if I had one regret, and I'm not a person that has regrets, or I, I, don't, I don't spend a lot of time looking in the rear view mirror and saying, well, I wish I'd have done this, I wish I'd have done that. But if I had one regret about my career is I became um, and started to fulfill that promise after I left Toronto. Mm. And I really wish that if I had one thing that I could change is that I would have became the pitcher that I did become. I, I would have loved to have pitched that way for the Toronto Blue Jays. Because mm. Toronto is a special place you know, to me and my heart and, my 11-year-old son, man, it's like his favorite team is the Toronto Blue Jays. I think that's the coolest thing in the world, mm. you know, and he loves the Blue Jays, and he wants to come up, and someday I'm going to bring him up, take him to the stadium and that whole deal. But, um, and, and, you know, Toronto will always be a special place. Those World Series rings, uh, uh, they have dominance over the other World Series ring that I have as part of the collection. And there's, there's a lot of meaning. There's a lot. And it was for me, it was like so much of the city and I was growing up and, mm. and going through everything that I went through. But if I didn't go through it, I would have never become what I became. And, you know, if I would have never persisted, mm. you know, so. 92 is, is remarkable in a way because it, it was a real journey in terms of, like you guys had, you had a bunch of losing streaks in there. Ooh. And, you know, a lot, a lot of talent, obviously, and then final self-realization at the end. But... Um, so when you go back and you think about the anatomy of that of that season, um, what what did you what did you learn about a team that achieves what it what it achieves through what it what it went through that year? You know, we had a big lead and we squandered the lead late in August. I don't mm. know if you guys remember. We we given we gave up our lead. We had mm. about an eight ten game lead. We just threw it away and mm. we were playing bad. And and I had hit a personal streak too um, that for three or four starts I was getting killed. I mean, I wasn't getting through the fifth inning. And I was giving up seven, eight, nine, ten runs and just getting beat all over the ballpark. And, and uh, you know, I remember there was two things that there was a movement that happened in August in, uh, of 92. Hmm. And one was another call to my father. And, and I, I remember calling my dad. And, and, and there's two quick stories. And I won't spend too much time here. But... I recall dad and I said, dad, I'm, I said, man, I said, I make a good pitch, they're getting hits, I make a bad pitch, they're hitting home runs. And I'm like, man, I stink. And I said, and I can't figure out, it's like, I can't, I go, I'm not even getting through the, he goes, I know, I, I've been watching on the highlights. And, and he says, Todd, you think you're making good pitches, but you're actually not. He says, you're, hmm. you're, everything is elevated in the strike zone. And those pitches you think are good are jamming guys. These guys are so good, so strong. They're, they're splashing balls into the, so you think it's a good pitch, and then you make a bad pitch out over the plate, and somebody's taking you deep for a three-run homer. And I'm like, yeah, that's it. That's my games. Mm. And he says, uh, he goes, Todd, he says, there's, there's, he goes, I want you in between starts to, to keep, get the game simple for you again. He goes, I want you to think about just staying back, mm. finish strong, and think down in the strike zone. I'm like, I can do that. And he goes, and I want you to do one other thing for me. I want you to write KISS, K-I-S-S, -S, on the inside of the bill of your hat. And I'm like, KISS? He goes, yeah, keep it simple, stupid. Mm. He goes, and every time the game gets confusing or there's whatever, I want you to take your hat off. I want you to look at that. Mm. And what KISS means to you is stay back, finish strong, mm. think down in the strike zone. Mm. And at the same time that I had this conversation with my father, Cito Gaston had a locker room meeting. And by the way, guys, Cito didn't have a lot of locker room meetings. So when he did, and when, he, when Cito had a meeting, it was like you could hear a pin drop. Everybody was listening. Mm. 
And I remember he said th these things, and, and that message that he told us in 1992, I keep with me today, and I use every part of my business. He says, number one, you got to know your strengths. So each one of you guys in this room, you have to know what your strengths are. He says, number two, you have to know the strength of your teammates. You need to understand what they're capable of and what they're not capable of. Mm -hmm. And he goes, and number three, guys, you need to know the strengths and weaknesses of your competition. He goes, if you can master those three things, the talent that is sitting in this locker room right now will become a world championship team. I'll never forget that speech. He turned around and walked out of the locker room. And we were all sitting around like, man, that is so right. That's middle of August, around that yeah. time when you're floundering. Wow. Same time I have the conversation with my father. My next start, I throw a one-hit shutout against the White Sox Amazing. in Chicago. We go on a winning streak and then just roll right through the playoffs and into the World Series. Crazy.